This is Chapter 2, Module 2, Inorganic Molecules. The learning objectives of this module are 1. List the body's inorganic compounds and their functions. 2. Explain the importance of water in living organisms and the unique characteristics of water. And 3. Explain the importance of oxygen and carbon dioxide to living organisms. Compounds in the body can either be organic or inorganic. Organic molecules contain carbon and hydrogen as their main atoms. Organic molecules include carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, and nucleic acids. Inorganic molecules are not based on carbon and hydrogen. Inorganic compounds include carbon dioxide, oxygen, water, and inorganic acids, bases, and salts. In this segment, we will look at inorganic molecules. Water is the most abundant inorganic molecule in the human body and accounts for up to two-thirds of your total body weight. Water is found as a solution in your body. A solution is a uniform mixture of two or more substances. Water is the solvent or medium in which atoms, ions, or other molecules are dispersed. The atoms, ions, and molecules are called the solutes. Water is a polar molecule where the oxygen and hydrogen atoms have opposite charges. The hydrogen side of the molecule has a more positive electrical charge, and the oxygen side of the molecule has a negative charge. This allows the water molecule to become attracted to many other different types of molecules. The polarity of water gives it several properties that make it an ideal solvent for the body. These properties are its solubility, its reactivity, its high heat capacity, and its lubrication ability. Water is very useful as a solvent in the body, meaning it has good solubility. Water is capable of dissolving a variety of different substances, which is why it is such a good solvent. And water is called the universal solvent because it dissolves more substances than any other liquid. This is important to every living thing on earth. It means that wherever water goes, either through the ground or through our bodies, it takes along valuable chemicals, minerals, and nutrients. For example, water can become so heavily attracted to a different molecule like salt or sodium chloride that it can disrupt the attractive forces that hold the sodium and chloride in the salt molecule together and thus dissolve it. Water is also very useful because many reactions can be carried out in water. We call this the reactivity property of water. Many substances will spontaneously undergo chemical reactions in water. Water also has a high heat capacity. This is the water's ability to absorb and retain heat so the temperature of the body doesn't change drastically in different environments. This resistance to sudden temperature changes makes water ideal for the body. The high heat capacity helps limit changes in the body temperature in a warm or a cold environment. For example, the temperature of your body does not drastically drop to the same temperature as the outside temperature while you are skiing or playing in the snow. In contrast, water's high heat capacity helps limit the changes in body temperature in hot weather. Water allows the body to release heat when high temperatures are higher than the body temperature. The body begins to sweat and the evaporation of water from the skin surface very efficiently cools the body. Water is an effective lubricant around joints, reducing friction with body movements. It also acts as a shock absorber for your eyes, brain, spinal cord, and even for the fetus through amniotic fluid. Ultimately, water is at the center of life. This is why no one can live more than three to five days without any water intake. Water is involved in the dissociation of molecules. An example of this is when salt dissolves or dissociates in water. The water molecules form hydration spheres around the separated ions to keep them in solution. The polarized water molecules surround the sodium ions and the chloride ions. In this way, water is holding the ions in solution. Water can also surround compounds like the glucose molecule. Water will form hydration spheres around the glucose molecules without breaking them up, and glucose is then carried in solution by the water. Glucose, therefore, will not dissociate like the ionic compound salt does. The compounds that dissociate in water are called electrolytes. Sodium chloride is an important electrolyte in body fluids. Other important electrolytes are potassium chloride, calcium phosphate, sodium bicarbonate, magnesium chloride, sodium hydrogen phosphate, and sodium sulfate. When these electrolytes are dissolved in body fluids, they become inorganic ions that conduct electricity. An electrolyte imbalance seriously disturbs vital body functions. An aqueous solution is a solution in which the solvent is water. Some compounds in an aqueous solution are attracted to the water molecules, especially compounds with a charge. 
We call these compounds hydrophilic because they are water-loving. Polar molecules and ions are both hydrophilic. When compounds do not interact with water, they will repel away from the water molecules. These compounds are said to be hydrophobic or water-fearing. Nonpolar molecules, fats, and oils are all hydrophobic compounds. A type of aqueous solution in the body is a colloid solution where the large organic molecules, such as proteins, are suspended in a watery solvent called plasma. We will refer to colloid solutions when we discuss the blood. Other inorganic molecules include acids and bases. An acid is a chemical that when you put it in water, it will break down and release hydrogen ions into the solution. If the solution releases more hydrogen ions than it does hydroxide ions, it will be called an acidic solution. A strong acid is hydrochloric acid. When hydrochloric acid is placed in water, it breaks down into the hydrogen ion and the chloride ion. There are no hydroxide ions at all, so this is a very strong acid. A base is a chemical that when you put it in water, it will break down and release hydroxide ions into the solution. If the solution releases more hydroxide than it does hydrogen ions, it will be called a basic or alkaline solution. An example of a base is sodium hydroxide. When sodium hydroxide is placed in water, it will break apart into sodium ions and hydroxide ions. There are no hydrogen ions, so sodium hydroxide is a very strong base. Scientists use something called the pH scale to measure how acidic or basic a liquid is. The pH scale measures the concentrations of hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions in the solution. The scale measures values from 0 all the way up to 14. Distilled water is 7, right in the middle. Distilled water is considered neutral because all it contains are water molecules. The water molecules can only break apart into equal portions of hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. So distilled water is considered neutral with a pH of 7. Acids are solutions with any pH below 7, and bases are solutions with any pH above 7. The pH scale ranges from 0 to 14, so acids have a pH from 0 up to 7, and bases have a pH from 7 up to 14. Most of the liquids you find in the body have a pH near 7. They are either a little below or a little above that mark. You don't find strong acids and bases in the body as they would be very dangerous. A solution with a pH of 1 is a very strong acid, such as hydrochloric acid or such as battery acid. A solution with a pH value of 14 includes sodium hydroxide or other solutions, such as drain cleaner. The pH of human blood is an important value to remember. The pH of human blood ranges between 7.35 and 7.45. Blood pH is regulated by the respiratory system and the urinary system to stay within the narrow range of 7.35 to 7.45, making it slightly basic. Blood that has a pH below 7.35 is too acidic, whereas blood pH above a 7.45 is too basic. A blood that is too acidic or too basic can easily cause disease and eventually death. Salts are inorganic compounds that dissociate into cations and anions other than hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. An important example of salts in the body is sodium chloride. When sodium chloride is placed in water, it will dissociate into sodium ions and chloride ions, and there won't be any hydrogen or hydroxide ions. A buffer is a weak acid salt compound. When added to a solution, buffers neutralize either strong acids or strong bases. Sodium bicarbonate is a very important buffer in the body. Sodium bicarbonate can either remove hydrogen ions or release hydrogen ions in body fluids, in other words, if the pH of a blood rises above 7.45, then sodium bicarbonate will release hydrogen ions to bring the pH back down to 7.35 to 7.45, its normal range. In contrast, if the pH of blood becomes lower than 7.35, then sodium bicarbonate will bind to hydrogen ions to remove them from the solution and bring the pH back up to 7.35 to 7.45. You see, a buffer will accept hydrogen ions in acids or donate hydrogen ions in bases. There are three important buffer systems that work similarly in our bodies. Bicarbonate buffer systems, phosphate buffer systems, and protein buffer systems. An antacid is a basic compound that neutralizes acids and forms a salt. Alka-Seltzer, Tums, and Rolaids are examples of antacids. 
two other important inorganic compounds in your body are oxygen and carbon dioxide. With each breath you exchange the gases oxygen and carbon dioxide. Every cell in your body needs oxygen to function. You get the oxygen your cells need from the air that you breathe. Your body cells use the oxygen you breathe to get energy from the food you eat. This process is called cellular respiration. During cellular respiration the cell uses oxygen to break down sugar. Breaking down sugar produces the energy your body needs. This is very similar to wood burning in a fire. As the wood burns it combines with oxygen and releases heat energy and carbon dioxide. When the cell uses oxygen to break down sugar, oxygen is used and carbon dioxide is produced and energy is produced as well. But instead of heat energy, much of the energy produced in cellular respiration is stored chemically for the cell to use later. This ends Module 2 of Chapter 2, Inorganic Compounds.